Hi everyone, I hope you're all keeping well and not missing football at Durka too much right now. Hopefully we're back training and back in matches very, very soon. A few of you have expressed an interest in the goalkeeping position and for what it's worth, I've created a few videos on the um, basics of being a goalkeeper and some drills you can practice at home. These have been dedicated to the under seven side and of course they are open to all at Durka, but I just wanted to make it clear that some of the messages, exercises and simplicity are based at the under seven age group. In my opinion, there are three important aspects of being a goalkeeper. There are elements of using your body, elements of using the ball, and elements of using your brain. And in this video, we're going to look at all three. As a goalkeeper, you can use your hands to catch the ball, and no other player on the team can do that. So it's important that you're comfortable handling the ball. And that means catching it, and it means saving it, and it means picking it up. To catch the ball, it's always best to use a W and with your hands like that, nice thumbs together, hands wide apart. What that does, that makes a net out of your hands. So when the ball's up high and you catch it, that W, you then bring it back down into your body, back down to your chest. If you have a shot fired in low to your body, you catch it into your body and pull it in like that. Your body should always be behind the ball. If your body isn't behind the ball, it can go through your hands and into the goal. One way to actually get comfortable with the ball is to practice handling the ball. And what I'm going to do here is a very simple drill. We're outdoors here, but you can do this indoors, provided that all of mummy and daddy's ornaments are put away and we don't damage anything. Simply roll the ball around your leg, using both hands to control the ball around the leg. Once you've achieved that one, we then work on the opposite leg. And what that does, that shows your hands, your fingers and your eyes are all working together to control the ball. Another variation, you can go the opposite direction, or you can go in a figure of eight, through that one, back around that one. Another exercise you can do to control the ball is you pass it around your legs like this. And what that shows, again, that shows coordination between the two hands and also shows that you're comfortable handling the ball and sliding the ball. Today's a bit wet, so it's actually quite a good practice because some days you're gonna get wet gloves playing on a wet pitch. Again, the same thing with the ball, pass it around your body like that. And what that's doing, that's showing your hands are working together to control the ball. All this is good practice using your hands, get them used to on the ball, gripping it and moving your body around with the ball. So as another challenge, we've already done the spinning the ball around the legs drill to get control of the ball with your hands. If whilst doing that you drop the ball, the challenge is to pounce on the ball and smother it. Once you've done that as a goalkeeper, the game is dead for a bit. You can stop the game. Nobody can get the ball out of your hands. So wherever possible, the goalkeeper should use their hands to pick the ball up, let everybody get back into position, look around, and then choose a teammate to pass to. When you're a goalkeeper, you may need to dive for the ball and catch the ball. So you have to be comfortable at full stretch handling the ball. And that's what we're gonna do here. Taking a football, lean back as far as you can go, touch the ball behind your head twice on the floor. Sit back up again, take a moment, lean across, touch it to your right as far as you can go. Back into the body, sit back up again, and then across to the left. Stretch it on the floor twice. Back again, and sit back up. You should go to do that a lot easier than I can. Okay, so in this section of the video, we're gonna learn about dealing with low shots. If I can have a ball, please. Now the goalkeeper there made a basic mistake. Legs wide apart and bent down to get the ball. What we don't want to do is see that happen in a game. If that happens in a game, it will cost us a goal. What we have developed as a goalkeeping union is something called the barrier stop. And for those of you that watch cricket, you might already be familiar with this. If I can have a ball, please. We go down on one knee and we catch the ball. If we miss the ball, the ball hits the knee and it saves going in the goal. Another way of achieving the barrier stop is this alternative technique. If I can have a ball, please. We can also go down with a foot behind the ball. You can distribute with either your hands or with your feet. In this part, I'm going to show you the three ways of distribution with your hands. The first one is a big throw. You take the stance in this way, pointing where it's going to go, and you throw the ball. The second one of doing it is you are more relaxed, more stance like that, and you can bowl it that way to a teammate. And then the third way is you take the ball and you can roll it to a teammate. There's also the option of kicking the ball to distribute it. There's three main ways of kicking a ball, being a goalkeeper. Number one is what we all like to do, what we all see. Throw the ball up and a big kick right through it. Second way to do it, is you have the ball, throw it up, let it bounce once, and then kick it. And then the third way, you've got the ball, if you've got time, look over your shoulders, look around you, throw the ball on the floor, and then kick it off the ground, 
just like a normal outfield player would. When the game is happening at the other end of the pitch, it can be very boring for a goalkeeper. Your mind might wander, look at that crisp packet, look at those seagulls, why is that car moving in the car park? But suddenly a goal might happen behind you because the ball's travelled very quickly forwards. As we've seen at training, a ball can travel fast. So it's important to stay focused on the pitch and stay focused what's happening on the pitch. A tip that I used to use was to actually commentate on the game. And that sounds quite crazy. You're studying your goal and your goalkeeping gloves on and you're talking to yourself. But it helps you watch the game, understand what's happening in the game, but more importantly, what might happen next in the game. So, for example, as a goalkeeper, I'll be there watching, saying, you know, Martin's got the ball and he's passed it to David. David controls it very well. He passes it to Simon. Simon gives it back to Martin. Martin scores. Yes, it's a goal. Yeah, we've scored. But what that means is that I'm actually watching the game at all times. I'm not watching the seagull. I'm not watching the Chris Packer. I'm not watching the car. Thanks for watching. Um, I hope you've enjoyed that and I hope it's been some useful information within that video for you. Um, above all, I just want to say that a goalkeeper needs to be brave. Your job is to stop the ball going in the goal. And sometimes that means getting in the way. Um, there's no two ways about it. Um, it doesn't mean it's not fun. Um, I had great fun for 25, maybe 30 years playing in goal. Fantastic times. Um, not every goal will be your fault. Just remember that. You're not going to save every ball. You're not going to stop every goal. You're not going to catch every shot. You will make mistakes, and that happens in life. Just enjoy what you're doing. If you enjoy it, and if you have fun, you'll be better at it. But above all, I hope you're keeping safe, as I've said, and I look forward to seeing you all at training very soon. Bye for now.